the lockdown has affected us deeply. While it may initially seem a relief to many of us to be able to stay home for a while, ultimately all of this will signify deprivation and hardship to most of us because our entire lives are on hold and sometimes in jeopardy. We are learning to make do and mend again, you could say. We are missing out on lots of events that we had looked forward to, that seem essential, irretrievable. We begin to realize how quickly everything can turn bad in a crisis. Many of us are cut off from family members we love and care for. We can no longer visit them. And we have to find new ways of communicating, which we are doing. For some people, of course, the crisis has already become a catastrophe, as they have lost their jobs or even their loved ones. Existential therapists come into their own at a time of calamity, on the whole. Because when everything is turned upside down and everything changes and loss abounds, we stand in the breach. We know how to do that. We're used to dealing with moments like this when everything is suddenly in question. And we realize that nothing will ever be the same again. We know that people have an amazing inner capacity for transformation and for resilience, no matter what's happening to them. But it can take time. It's quite astonishing though like Camus said in this now so topical novel, The Plague, in the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. We know that no matter how hard the world and nature push us, or push against us even, there is always within me something stronger, something better, pushing right back, said Albert Camus. So we speak of the possibility of finding existential courage to seek new meaning, not despite, but because of the fact that we suffer the loss of so many things. Things we used to take for granted had lost their value and now we rediscover the value of things. Paul Thielig insightfully spoke about the courage as being the affirmation of being in spite of the threat of non-being. He described self-affirmation as the act of an individual in participating in the world and that is really important because right now we're isolating from the world and in order to be courageous we have to be able to participate and engage so it will be vital for us to find new and creative ways of connecting again for it is essential for our mental health that we continue to be capable of contributing something of value, something good to the world. That's what makes us feel worthy and that's what makes us feel emotionally and mentally healthy. Perhaps it was Carl Jaspers actually who was the most outspoken about such experiences of disaster and difficulty. For he affirmed that these kinds of what he called limit situations push us to rediscover ourselves. 
and push us, force us to realize what it is that truly, truly deeply matters to us. And that's the only way we really find ourselves and become ourselves. So in a sense, we need something to push against in order to be challenged enough to find that force inside of us. We need suffering and we need defeat in order to come to our senses. When we are confronted with death, guilt, suffering, struggle and chance, he said, we learn to engage and communicate in a much, much more real way. We get to the heart of the matter. Experiencing such challenging circumstances, we really learn to be true in what Jaspers called the loving struggle of life. And that always involves being in relationship and communicating about these things in order to find meaning in them. So if we want to find fresh strength and courage, we might also want to turn to Nietzsche because he's probably the best known existential philosopher when it comes to getting ready to pick up the gauntlet that fate has thrown at us. What Nietzsche challenges is always to overcome not just our predicament, but overcome ourselves and rise from those challenges with a new sense of what we are capable of being. He admonishes us to allow ourselves to be deeply touched and transformed by our trials and tribulations. But we can only do that if we allow ourselves to feel the pain and the fear as well. In his book, The Spoke Zarathustra, he said, But there is something in me that I call courage. It has always destroyed every discouragement in me. For courage is the best destroyer. Courage that attacks. For in every attack, there is a triumphant shout. I wish you courage, thoughtfulness, communication, and I wish us all that triumphant shout. <laughs>